Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the leak code question, smallest integer divisible by k. All right, so this question is a little bit tricky. So let's just first read the question and then let's see how we can solve it. Okay, so given a positive integer k, you need to find the length of the smallest positive integer n such that n is divisible by k. And n only contains the digits 1. Okay, so the number n over here is either going to be 1 uh, or uh, 11 or 111, 1111. So whatever the number is, it's only going to be filled with 1s, okay? So that over there actually helps us quite a bit in solving this question. So return the length of n. If there is no such n, then we return negative 1, okay? Uh, n may not fit in a 64-bit sign integer. Okay, anyway, so uh, for example, over here we have k is equal to 1. So in this case, uh, 1 divided by 1 gives us a value of 1. There is no remainder, so in that case, we just end up returning 1 because when you divide k with the number 1, you get a, a valid answer without any remainder, right? So uh, similarly over here, k equals 2, there is no possible answer, so we end up returning negative 1. And uh, one last example, so k is equal to 3 over here, and when k is equal to 3, uh, it is divisible with the n value of 111. It is divisible but by the value of 111, so in that case, uh, we output that length, which in this case is the value 3, okay? So now let's actually try to understand how exactly can we solve this question over here. So one thing that we know for a fact is that our n value over here is going to consist of all ones, right? So one, it could be whatever it is, it just has all ones. So uh, keeping that in mind, we know for a fact that it is going to end in the value one, right? And we know one is odd. So now let's just look at our k value. So for whatever possibility, uh, whatever possibility of values we have for k, they are always going to end in the number zero. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, right? So that's pretty obvious. Obviously, all numbers end in 0 through 9, right? So in this case, we can actually uh, make our question a little bit easier. So let's just look at the even numbers in the beginning. So we have 0, we have 2, 4, 6, and 8, right? So whenever a number ends with an even number, all of its multiples are going to be even. So let me just write it down. Okay, so the multiples of even numbers are always going to be even. And that actually tells us that we are never going to have some sort of multiple which ends with the value one. So what we can do is we can directly eliminate any k value whose uh, unit place value or the starting value starts with any of the odd numbers, right? So, sorry, even numbers. So if it's zero, two, four, six or eight, we are never going to find an answer and we will directly just return negative one. Okay, so this kind of clears it all up. Now, uh, now let's just look at the other possibility. So in this case, we have the number one. So if we have the number one as a k value or any k value ending with the number one or in the units place, in that case, we can find a possible answer. So this is a possibility. So uh, any k value ending with three is also a possibility. But any k value ending in 5 is not a possibility. So why exactly is that? So all multiples of whatever number which is ending with 5 is either going to be 0 or 5, right? You can look at the multiples. They're always going to end in either 0 or 5. There's no other option. But we're looking for something which ends with the value 1 because all the numbers inside of n are going to be 1. So this over here is also not going to be a valid solution. So whenever we have a k value which starts or ends with 5, then in that case, we can just eliminate that. Okay, and one more thing, I just want to be clear. I keep mixing up between starts and ends. Uh, I just This over here refers to whatever is at the unit place, okay? Uh, then 7, if 7 is in the unit place, that could also be a possible answer. And same for 9. So this over here can be one sort of way that we can get our solution. So we're first going to check if whatever is in the units place is not 0, 2, 4, 5, 6, or 8. We're looking for something which is either 1, 3, 7, or 9. If anything has 1, 3, 7, or 9 in the units place, then we know that we have a valid answer over here. And uh, in that case, we are going to go in some sort of while loop, for example, and find the answer. And okay, so this is the code that I wrote. I'll just go through it real quickly. So over here, we're checking if whatever is in the units place is not in 1, 3, 7, or 9. Then in that case, 
we're directly just returning negative one because we're never going to get an answer. So after that, we have the number. So the number over here is going to be the n value and we have a length and which the length starts off one, right? Because the number is one and the number one has a length of one. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go inside of a while true statement. And if the number mod k is equal to zero, then in that case, we just return whatever length we are at. And if that is not the case, we're going to add an extra one to our number. So in the beginning, our number is one. So now the next value is going to be 11. So to get that, we do one into 10, so 10, and then plus one, giving us a number uh, 11, right? So we're gonna update our number like that. And each time we're also going to increase the length by one. Okay, so that should be it for our solution. So as you can see, it's accepted. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching guys. Do let me know if you have any questions and yeah.